Would you believe that after 3,000 years of using lines, the mathematicians of the world confess that they don't know what a line is? Ask a tenured college professor to define a line, and he will tell you that the word line cannot be defined. Points, lines, and planes are the foundations of a whole system of geometry. But point, line, and plane are all undefined terms. Lines are not defined at all, but characterized, I say characterized, axiomatically by their properties. Now come on, how hard can this be? Why do our mathematicians have so much trouble with a simple geometric figure? Would you recognize a line if I drew one for you? The reason the mathematicians of the world avoid defining the word line has solely to do with the fact that they do not intend to use this word consistently. You know, like, scientifically. The mathematicians use several definitions simultaneously and jump from one to the next without you knowing. One famous mathematician who does this is Herman Weyl. In his book Space Time Matter, Whale takes up no fewer than 10 pages to define what a line is. Whale begins with a definition that is still quite popular in mathematical physics. First of all, the straight line. Its distinguishing feature is that it is determined by two of its points. Two points make a line? That's funny. I thought it was the other way around. Point. The intersection of two lines. In mathematical physics, two points make a line and two lines make a point, and the mathematicians just continue as of nothing. But okay, let's concede the two-point proposal. Would you recognize these two points as a line? It turns out that the line of mathematics does not consist of two points. Whale now clarifies that a line is really the distance between the two points. The straight line lies evenly between its points. If the line is what lies between the two points, we don't need them. Let's get rid of the points and see what the line of mathematics looks like. Is this what a line is? But Whale is not finished yet amending his line. Next he tells us that a line is actually comprised of a series of points. We shall obtain an array of points on the straight line under construction. The end points of all factors, O, P, form a straight line. So in what way is a row of apples like two points? Like the empty space between two points? But I would be satisfied if this great scholar would just stop brainstorming proposals. Whale now waves his magic wand and converts the row of apples into a long cutthroat. All the points which we obtain finally fuse together into a linear continuum in which they become embedded, giving up their individual existences. So I'm lost. We started out with two points, which really turned out to be the spacing between the points, which somehow turn into a series of points and ends up as a single stick. Which of these is the line of mathematics? And just when you thought he was through pitching ideas, Whale now tells us that a line is more like, you know, a door hinge. Not only the straight line, but also the plane is based on a property of rotation. The mathematicians are saying that in order to know what a stick is, you must spin it. So let's recap. A line is two points or a series of points, or what we find between two points, or a solid stick, which you must rotate if you want to know what a line is. Are we done? Well, not quite. As far as mathematics is concerned, a line is none of the above. The mathematicians have no use for any of these lines that Whale has described, the reason for this is that mathematics doesn't deal with structure at all. Mathematics has nothing to do with geometry, with shapes, or with physics. Mathematics deals exclusively with dynamic concepts. Mathematics 
deals exclusively with motion. Every equation, every function of mathematics is a shorthand for an itinerary or for a relation. We must plug in different numbers for every variable in order to see a trend. Whale finally comes to this realization himself. He tells us that we must move a point if we want to know what a line is. Let A be a translation which transfers the point A sub zero to A. We may say that the straight line is derived from a point by an infinite repetition of the same infinitesimal translation and its inverse. For the purposes of mathematics, a line is just a bunch of footprints in the sand. Or maybe a series of locations that a ball occupied as it flew through the air. Is an itinerary the same thing as a geometric figure? Is a movie of a trace the same thing as a photograph of a line? We went from a series of points to a solid stick to a trace made by one point. Which of these is the line of mathematics? But Will is not true amending his line. He ends his presentation by telling us that a line is really just a bunch of numbers. If we take all possible whole numbers as values of n, this array will become denser in proportion as n increases. Of course, if a line can be so many things at once, we can see why the mathematicians of the world chose to tell you that the line of mathematics is a primitive word and should stay undefined. This state of affairs suits them just fine. It allows them to go back and forth between definitions and use them all simultaneously. In science, we do things a little differently. A line is a simple, elongated, two-dimensional rectangle that looks like this. Objectively, this is what we have before us. This is a geometric figure. This object is the scientific notion of a line because it can be used consistently. The mathematicians may argue that they have no use for this unremarkable object. The reply is a no-brainer. Science doesn't care whether a mathematician can use any geometric figure. This is what a line is for the purposes of geometry. Geometry deals with shapes. If the mathematicians cannot use this object, they should not use the word line to cover all their bases. If the mathematicians point to the genuine line of geometry, they should not use the same word to refer to the itinerary of a ball, or to a series of numbers, or to the space between two points, or to a bunch of footprints. Therefore, it is not that the word line is difficult or impossible to define, it is that the mathematicians wish to use several definitions simultaneously. If they define the word line as a stick, they cannot use it as a fly ball. And if they define it as the empty space between two points, they cannot later use it as a series of footprints in the sand. By leaving the word line conveniently undefined, the mathematicians are able to use several conflicting definitions simultaneously. In science, this is known as cheating. Until the mathematicians of the world are able to define the word line in such a way that they can use it consistently, they should be denied the use of this explain-it-all word in their dissertations. The malleable line of mathematics is inherently unscientific.